This is paper two, video four for the February mock. The first topic we're looking at here is going to be trigonometry. The reason we know that these questions are all to do with trigonometry is the fact that on each question we are given information about side and angle or we're given the sides and we are looking for the angle. So the fact that we've got information to do with angles, that tells us trigonometry. All four of these questions are right angle triangles, so we know that we're going to be using Sokartoa for each of the questions. I've started labelling up the first one. So here, based on the angle being here, this will be the adjacent side because it's just next to the angle. And this is the opposite side. We've got the opposite and adjacent. Well, they're linked by tan. In Sokartoa, the letters O and A are preceded by the letter T, which stands for tangent. So we get from our little formula that tan of the angle, so tan of 38, is equal to the opposite side, which we don't know, divided by the adjacent side, which was 8.5. We now need to rearrange this to try and get the opposite side on its own, to basically make that the subject. So we would need to times by 8.5, because that's the opposite of divide by 8.5. So if we times by 8.5, we get 8.5 times tan 38, which if you put it into your calculator is 6.64. The next question, a little bit lower down, very similar. So if we label up the side that we've got, so this 6.2 is the diagonal side. It's the one that is not touching the right angle, so that's the hypotenuse. And then this question mark, the one that we're looking for, is just next to the angle that we've been given. So that's the adjacent. A and H are preceded by the letter C. So we're going to use cos here. So again, similar to the question before, we've got that cos of the angle, so cos of 24, is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. It goes in the order of Sokartoa. So the adjacent side is the one we don't know. The hypotenuse is 6.2. So we get something that looks like this. Rearranging like the last question, we would have to times both sides by 6.2 to give us 6.2 times cos 24. And if you type that into your calculator, that gives an answer of 5.66. We're going to look at this question next, just because the one above is a slightly different style. So here again, the angle that we've got is 40 degrees. This side here is not touching the right angle. So again, this is the hypotenuse. If this is the angle, this side over here would be the opposite. So O and H are linked with sine, because that's the letter that just goes in front of the O and the H. So we've got sine of 40 is equal to the opposite side, which we don't know, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 10. Rearranging this just slightly, we get that 10 times sin 40, that will give us our opposite side. And 10 times sin 40 gives us an answer of 6.43. Now this question just up at the top is a little bit different, because here we've been given two sides and we're trying to find the angle here. So if we start off the exact same way and label up the sides, if this is the angle... This side here is just next to it, so that is the adjacent. And over here, we would have the opposite. O and A, opposite and adjacent, well, they're linked by tan. This time, we've got the tan of the angle. Now, we don't know what the angle is, so it's just used a symbol. It's alpha. You can use whatever symbol you want. Is equal to opposite over adjacent, so 5 over 6. In order to solve this one, to find the angle, we need to use tan to the minus 1. Which basically, is the inverse, the opposite of tan. So if you press either shift, second function, on your calculator and press tan, you should notice that you'll get a little minus 1 just after the tan. And then in brackets, we need to do 5 divided by 6, which again, if you type into your calculators, will give you an answer of 39.8 degrees. The next question we're going to look at is all to do with formula. 
Now here we've got to do some work with formulas based off an actual graph. The first part of the question wants us to find what the formula represented by this graph here, this conversion graph is. Well, the way that we do this, if C relates to cost and D is the number of days, the first thing I would look at is if there were zero days, we didn't rent, in this case, um, a drill. If we didn't rent it at all, okay, so zero days, the cost would still be 20. So here I'm going to scan through and actually look for the one that if D was zero, what the cost would be. So in this one, if D was zero, C would still equal four, because 20 times nothing is zero, so that would just disappear. Here, the 4D would disappear if D was zero, leaving 24, not what we wanted. This one looks a lot more likely. So if D was equal to nothing, we would have that C equals nothing plus 20. In other words, C equals 20, and that's the one that we wanted. Just as a side note to this, another way that we can work out which one of these graphs it would have to be is the letter um, D in front of it has a number. That number simply represents if I go along one, along the day column, along the day axis, should I say, how much we're going up on the graph over one day. So here, from zero to one, zero to one, we've gone from 20 up to 24. So it's going up by four. That's why that there has a 4D in front of it. The next part of the question is using a different formula. So this time, this is for a sander. We've got that C is equal to 6D plus 10. Well, straight away, I know that if D is zero here, that would make that disappear. So it would leave that C equals 10. So if I was to draw this on the graph, I put a little point at 10. And then I want another point on that graph, just so I can plot some points and actually join up the line. Easiest one to do is let's use quite a large number. So let's go for the biggest number on the graph, 10. So if D was 10, so the number of days that we rented the sander for was 10, we would get 6 times 10 plus 10 would be our cost. 6 times 10 is 60, plus 10 is 70. So if I rented that sander for 10 days, it would cost me £70. So if I put a little mark on the graph at that point, and then to draw the conversion graph, all I would need to do is join those two points together. To give you something that looks like that. The next part of the question then says... If you are hiring both at the same time, so both the sander and the drill, so both of these conversion graphs being used here, what would the cost, uh, sorry, how many days would it be if it had a total cost of 90? All I would do there is a little bit of trial and error, is go along the graph and read off the values at different points on the graph. So straight away I'm looking at this one, thinking at five days, both of these are costing me 40. Six days, tiny bit more. So we're going to read off some sort of value around about the four or so five or six day mark in order to get that. With a little bit more accuracy, I believe we've gone the, I've drawn the line a little bit inaccurate. I think the answer would have been six days because I think both would give a value of forty five pounds.